Gee, I'm a tree. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you like that new intro. This is Circle Union lesson number three, Inside Angles of a Circle. And we love our circles and we will always love them. Um, just to let you know, this lesson will cover three additional little theorems that you can toss in as sort of a none of the above place to go. Um, so let's get started. First one is the two equal chord theorem. The two equal chord theorem, I just call it that because I think it's so super awesome to call it that. But anyway, so I have two chords that are equal to each other. The intercepting arcs are equal. So therefore, if two equal chords, then intercepting arcs are equal to each other. So if I know that A, B, and C, D are equal, then I know that arc A, B, and C, D are equal. Simple concept. Um, it does come up with the reasons occasionally, so I just want to make sure you guys do get that. Next one. We're going to do an example. I know that A, B is congruent to C, D, and A, B is equal to 50 degrees and BD is equal to 30 degrees. Find AC. So let's do this one really quickly. AB is 50 degrees. So let's mark up our diagram. First thing we always, always, always do. We have BD is 30 degrees. Huh, I wonder what AC is. But the key thing is that I know that AB and CD are equal. So the first thing we can do is we know that we have two equal chords, so therefore their arcs are congruent. 50 is going to be congruent to CD which is also 50 degrees. Now, how many degrees are in a circle? You should know this, know this, know this, know this. 360 degrees. So we're going to take these four arcs and add them together. And I'm going to set it equal to 360 degrees because I have no more arcs left. I know three of them, so that must be all the left over go with X. So we combine like terms, I get X plus 130 degrees equals 360 degrees. I know that x is equal to uh, 230, 230 degrees. A lot for that one. And therefore AC is going to be equal to 230 degrees. Okay. Now let's take a look at another theorem. Yeah, this one is called parallel chord theorem. This one comes up a little bit more often than the other one. But this theorem basically says if I have two parallel chords, then the arcs that are being intercepted are equal to it. And so in this case, the intercepted arcs are not going to be A, B, and C, D. It's going to be A, C, and B, D, the ones that are opposite each other, going in the same direction as the parallel chords. Let's take a look at an example. I know that AB is parallel to CD. If arc AB is 60 degrees and arc CD is 120 degrees, I want to know what the measure of arc AC is. Okay, and I'm going to put an X there. We don't have any X's involved in the problem, so I can do that. Now, if the key thing with this theorem, the parallel chord theorem, says that if this is X, then BD is going to be X. Now, how many degrees are in a circle again? Good, 360 degrees. So, we take, oops, I messed that one up. So, x plus 60 plus x plus 120 degrees is equal to 360. When you work it all out, you end up getting x is equal to 90 degrees. I'm not going to do the algebra here, but... Basically, as X is representing AC, so AC is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, now let's do one more example with this, and we're going to combine basically the two equal chord theorem as well as the parallel chord theorem. Now, if AB is parallel to CD and AB is congruent to CD and arc AB is equal to 70 degrees, find AC. So we know these are parallel to each other, and they're also equal to each other. Now, AB, arc AB is 70 degrees. What other arc is going to be 70 degrees? Now, I know these are equal chords, so therefore the arcs are going to be equal. So if this is 70, then CD must be 70. Okay? Now, one thing sort of just take a quick gander. If you know something's equal, just remember, do the little finger thing. Go, hmm... They look equal. They're probably equal. 
So if those are 70, I want to know what AC is, so I'm going to put an X there. If this is X because of the parallel lines, BD is going to be X. So now we add up all the, uh, all the arcs, and I know that they're going to be equal to 360 degrees. Okay. Now I'm not going to show you the algebra to save some time, but basically we end up getting 2x plus 140 is equal to 360. And at the end, we get x is equal to 110 degrees. Okay, easy concept. Now, we need to learn one more definition before we can finish up our third theorem before we get to the meat of today's lesson. And that's a tangent. Now, a tangent, we probably have learned trig, not the same deal here. Tangent is a line outside the circle touching it only once. Okay, so therefore I have this line that has B here touching the circle once at B. And point B can be considered a point of tangency. And that's basically the point that the line, the tangent, is touching the circle. Okay. Now, let's take a look at an example, or another theorem. The angle involving the chord and tangent, it's very much like an inscribed angle. It's actually the same concept. Remember, the inscribed angle touches the circle as two chords that meet at the edge of the circle. In this case, they're still meeting at the edge, but it's sort of going away from the center of the circle. So this is still equal to one half of the arc it intercepts. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the example. If BC is tangent to circle O at B, and angle ABC is 40 degrees, I want to know what arc AB is. Now, if you remember, this arc is going to be equal to twice as big as the angle, because the angle is half the arc. Something half of, of something else, then we could say do the double for the bigger. So I can say x is going to be equal to 2 times 40 degrees, and that's equal to 80 degrees. Okay? So arc AB equals 80 degrees. Okay? Now, let's take a look at our big theorem of the day. It's called the inside angles of the circle. Now, the thing with the inside angles of the circle is that it has to happen when you have two chords that are intersecting each other. And basically the angle that's here, we know these two are equal. And you should remember starts with the V and ends with an L. We got vertical angles, yay! So therefore, these two angles are equal to each other, but those arcs are definitely not equal to each other. So luckily, they came up with a theorem just for you. Um, the angle inside of the circle is equal to the average of the two intercepting arcs. Okay, so we're going to add the two arcs here divided by two. So in other words, I like to sort of write it like this. We write the angle is equal to the arc plus the arc divided by two. And these arcs are the two different ones. Okay, let me just highlight that right here. I'm talking about BD and CA. Now, let's take a look at an example. Really simple one. And they seem to ask one of these questions on the readings exam, so I just want to make sure once again that you know that I do this. Um, the measure of AC is 60 degrees. And the measure of arc BD is 100 degrees. I want to know what X is. And X is the angle in the middle. So we look at these two arcs. I get AC and BD. So we use our formula. The angle is equal to the arc plus the arc divided by 2. And you can s replace the angle with X because that's what it is. And that's going to be equal to 60 plus 100 divided by 2. And in this case, it does not matter which order you go in because we're adding. I can do 100 plus 60 is the same thing as 60 plus 100. Now, x is going to equal to 160 degrees divided by 2, and x is equal to 80 degrees. Okay? And now the key thing with this is that they have 60 and 100. If you notice, 80 is directly in the middle. If you were to get 20 here, you can just smack yourself in the head and go, oh no, I messed up somewhere. So, please do that if you do. Now, nah, I'll laugh at you during your test. Anyway, so, let's take a look at another example. 
And this one's a little bit different than the other one, but same concept. So the measure of arc AC is equal to 160 degrees. The measure of angle BED is 98. I want to know what the measure of arc BD is. Huh. We have that inside angle again. I have two arcs that are intercepted. So let's use the same formula. Remember, you can use the same formula. So I have the angle is equal to the arc plus the arc divided by 2. Okay. Now, in this case, let's replace what we know. The angle is 98 degrees. And that's going to be equal to 160 plus x divided by 2. We cross multiply. I get 196 is equal to 160 plus x. And x is equal to 36 degrees. And once again, the 98 is directly in the middle between 36 and 160. So if you had, let's say, 100 here, smack yourself in the head. You got it wrong. And think, oh no, and fix it. Okay? Now, let's take a look. Now, you have some examples that you want to try on your own real quick. So, I think you should pause this video and try it. If you want to be lazy, not pause the video, that's, feel free to do so. But let's go over the examples then. Okay, I was waiting for you to pause. Pause your video. You won't pause? Oh, fine. Let's move on. The measure of arc AC is 90 degrees. The, mark, the measure of arc BD is 110 degrees. I want to find X. So what do we do? So the angles inside of the circle. So what we can do is your favorite formula. You do angles equal to arc plus arc divided by 2. You plug in what we know, what we're looking for. I know that X is equal to 90 plus 110 divided by 2 and therefore x is going to be equal to simplifying it real quick it'll be a hundred degrees remember a hundred degrees this needs to be directly in the middle now let's take a look at this example oh no those numbers are not that pretty here the measure of arc ac is 84 degrees angle bed is 57 i want to know what arc bd is so, use the same formula. Angle is equal to arc plus arc divided by 2. We do 84 plus x is e over 2 equals 57. Sorry, I switched that a little bit. So, this is 57 degrees. We cross multiply. We get 84 plus x is equal to 114 degrees. And you get x is going to be equal to, after you subtract 84 from both sides, you get x is equal to 30 degrees. And once again, the 57 is between 30 and 84, so we're good to go. Now, next question actually comes from the Regents exam. So, hence the reason I want to make sure we go over it. Um, in the diagram below, trapezoid ABCD with bases A, B, and DC is inscribed in circle O with diameter DC. If the measure of arc AB equals 80, find the measure of arc BC. Okay, now the key thing about trapezoid, one set of parallel sides. So, we know that AB and DC are parallel to each other. If you're not sure, if you don't remember trapezoid, remember, let's look at the diagram. AB looks like it's parallel to DC, so we know that's pretty much it. Now, we know these parallel lines lead to two congruent arcs, so therefore this is going to be X. Also, now a diameter, if you remember from lesson number one, is cuts the circle in half. So I know there's 180 degrees in this whole section of the circle. From here all the way over here. So we do x plus 80 plus x equals 180 degrees. 2x equals 100. And x is going to be equal to 50 degrees. Wow, you just earned yourself some points in the regions. Okay, um, that's all for today. If you have any questions, I'll talk to you tomorrow in class. Otherwise, if you're not a member of my class, you can always shoot me an email. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye.